Welcome to r slash Am I the Butthole, where a child gets trapped in an active washing machine. Am I the butthole for not wanting to reimburse medical bills for a kid who jumped into a dryer while my clothes were drying? So I live in a basement suite that has a laundry room next to it. The room is shared by me and the family that I'm renting from as part of the rental agreement. One day a week, the family will unlock the door in the laundry room that leads to my suite, and thus, I'll have access to that room for the day. I put my clothes in the machine and then shut the door to the suite so that I don't hear all the ruckus. There are stairs in the laundry room that lead up to the rest of the house, so I assume that's how they access the laundry room. I had my clothes drying in the laundry room. All of a sudden, I hear yelling from the wife, and next thing I know, an ambulance has arrived. I soon learned that, one, apparently their four-year-old opened up the dryer and climbed in, and that, two, their dryer was faulty, so it doesn't shut off when you open the door. So, yeah, the kid was tumbling in there while the door was open because the machine didn't automatically shut itself off. Luckily, the kid turned out to be relatively fine. But now, the landlord and landlady want me to reimburse their son's ambulance and medical bill, totaling $8,400. Apparently, they don't have insurance. Their logic is because it was my laundry that the kid climbed into. I don't think that I'm responsible because, one, I'm not in charge of watching their kid. I'm paying an insane amount of rent to begin with, and I didn't agree to babysit anyone. And second, it's their faulty laundry machine. Still, they're insisting so I'm not sure. I went to a forum that was oriented towards landlords to see if I was really responsible. I was asked if the family ever raised rent. I've been living there for one year and four months, so I admit that no, they didn't raise rent when they could have. But still, they didn't do it for charity. I pay my rent on time every time, and I don't cause a problem. I assume that them not collecting a little extra is still better than the risk of trying to find a tenant that isn't troublesome. Anyways, I'm not planning to stay after the lease ends. Anyways, I was then told by the landlords online that I should be grateful that they didn't raise rent and I should pay up to be morally fair. Yeah, OP, this is super, super simple. Question one, who's responsible for their kid? Them. Two, who's responsible for repairing broken machinery? Also them. Three, whose day was it to have access to that room? Yours. So essentially, their kid, who they weren't watching, broke into your part of the apartment and was minorly injured because of their faulty machine. You are completely free of responsibility here. The fact that they didn't raise rent has nothing to do with it. OP, I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes. Please stand your ground here. I'm giving them 2.5 out of 5 buttholes. They're delusional. Am I the butthole for refusing to dye my daughter's hair because her school complained? My 15-year-old daughter dyed her hair dark reddish brown for her birthday. I didn't let her dye her hair in middle school, but I said that she could in high school. The school has a dress code for hair that just specified natural hair colors only. I took that to mean browns, blondes, reds, black, etc. Basically, natural tones. Her natural hair color is black, so I don't think that it's much of a change. But then, one of her teachers began complaining to me during parent-teacher meetings that her hair didn't meet dress code. I said that her hair color literally grew out of people's heads, so why was it out of dress code? She told me that it was clearly not her natural hair color, and I shot back that tons of her students had blonde hair and highlights when they were clearly natural brunettes. She claimed that they look like they could be blondes, but my daughter's hair was supposed to be black? What? What? My daughter is Asian. Aha! Aha! Racism detected! Racism spotted! We found it, guys! Mystery solved! We cracked the case! My daughter is Asian, so it's pretty racist to say that she can't dye her hair. I brought it up with the principal, but he agreed with the teacher, saying that it was against dress code. But I've seen tons of white kids in her class with obviously brown hair who dyed it blonde, and even red, but no one said anything. They want me to darken her hair again so that it looks natural. This went on until the end of the school year. I contacted the superintendent several times, but she never got back to me. It's almost the start of school again, and I got an email from the principal reminding me that my daughter is only allowed to have black hair. She still has her reddish brown hair and doesn't want to dye it back. But I've tried to fight this, and the last option available is to barge into the superintendent's office and demand that she get involved. Alright, <laughs> you guys ready for this? Not all Asians have black hair. I'll say it again. Not all Asians have black hair. 
Asians can have many different hair colors, including brown, light brown, even like brownish red. Asserting that all Asians must have black hair is a stereotype. Enforcing stereotypes on a certain race of students is a violation of their student rights. In fact, lots of Asians don't even have black hair. They just have really, really dark brown hair. I think I heard once that the predominant hair color in Asia is actually brown and not black. This is just a stereotype, man. It's literally just a stereotype that all Asians have black hair. Here's what I would <laughs> Here's what I would do, OP. I would find a lawyer and I would forward the email that the principal stupidly sent you in writing to your lawyer and say, "Hey lawyer, can you please draft a letter to the school that says this is discrimination. If you continue to enforce this policy, I will sue you." You may even want to contact the ACLU. This might be a little bit like too tame for them because they haven't actually like punished your daughter. They just said that your daughter has to change her hair color. But that being said, the ACLU might like write you a letter, a strongly worded letter informing the school that this is, um, that they're playing with fire here. So what I'm trying to say is OP, you barging into the superintendent's office is by no means the last step that you can take here. This is a clear, clear violation of rights. Basically they're saying their school policy is Student, this feels so awkward to say. Students can only have hair color that fit their race. Ooh, 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 ooh. You sure you want to write that in a school policy? Are you sure? Are you sure? I can't even say it out loud without cringing. Are you sure you want to enforce that policy? Man, I would be fighting on this. Not only are you morally right, but you are scientifically right as well. Because Asians can have red hair. They literally can have red hair. Anyways, I'm giving you zero out of five buttholes unless you just roll over and let the school win. In which case, I think I have to give you two out of five buttholes for not having your daughter's back and enabling your daughter to be discriminated against, which would be pretty bad, to be honest. The school, however, gets 2.5 out of five buttholes for having a racist hair policy. Am I the butthole for buying personalized stationery for my daughter so that it can't be redistributed in class? My nine-year-old daughter, Mia, started a new school recently. I got a list of supplies that the teacher required, plus extras like extra packs of crayons, etc. You know the deal. While I don't necessarily agree with this, it's not a hill that I'm willing to die on, so I got everything on the list. However, I also got my child her own supplies. Now, the list didn't say not to label them. Mia is very particular about what kind of stationery she likes. I've heard horror stories of kids stuff being redistributed and them ending up with sucky supplies. So I sat down with Mia and got her personalized binders, notebooks, and pencils with her name from Etsy. Her name is part of the item itself, so it can't be removed and given to another kid. And like I said, as requested, I bought extra binders. It turns out that I was right to do so. When Mia got home, she brought a passive-aggressive note from the teacher about Mia's supplies. Apparently, she had tried to gather all the kids' supplies and have kids pick new supplies. She requested that I switch Mia's supplies to generic ones, which I'm refusing to do. The teacher now requested that I stop by to have a chat regarding Mia's supplies. I posted in a local Facebook group, and parents are divided, so I need another opinion before I can go meet with Mia's teacher. Am I the butthole for buying my child's personalized stationery so it can't be taken away from her? Wait, hold up. Hold up. You bought extra supplies for other kids. And even after buying extra free stuff for other kids, your daughter still has to give away her stuff and get... Like, why? Why does she have to trade away her stuff for someone else's stuff? Doesn't even make sense. What? This is dumb. This is... This is stupid. Someone's calling this a Yankee swap in the comments. What the hell? What's, what is a Yankee swap? Oh, like white elephants? So everyone trades? Why? What, uh -huh, what? What's the point of this? Is it to like not make rich kids have rich stuff and poor kids have poor stuff so they don't discriminate against the other kids, I guess? Uh, I don't know. Overall, this feels dumb. It feels like a kind of like excessively, I don't know. It feels weird to me. OP, I'm giving you zero out of five buttholes. I think I'm actually not going to give the teacher a butthole score here because I just don't know enough. I don't know why this policy exists. I don't even know if it's like mandatory. She might just be enforcing the school's rules. It might just be her own stupid policy. I don't know. So I'm going to give her a question mark out of five buttholes because I just don't know enough about the situation. Of course, I haven't been to school in a long time. So if anyone down in the comments can shed some insight on this as to why this is going on and why the teacher cares so much, please let me know because I'm kind of curious. Am I the butthole for forcing my father to pay child support? My father is a dick. 
When he got my mother pregnant, he wanted her to quit her job and just stay home to be a good little wife and mother. He's very well off due to a trust fund, and he doesn't really need to work. My mother refused and divorced him. Because of a prenup, she got very little and he moved back to Europe. His parents never knew about me, and my mother had a good profession, so I never really wanted for anything. My grandmother and grandfather on my mom's side were awesome, and I got to spend my summers exploring the wilds of Western Canada with them. My father never paid the child support that he should have. But, like I said, it didn't really matter. My mom makes good money, and she gave me a great life as a kid. So, to the point of this post. I'm now a 28-year-old woman, and I'm getting married. I met the love of my life at university, and we've been together for 8 years. He's a wonderful person, and he really is my lobster. His family is from the same city as my father, and they're a huge rambunctious bunch. Because of a lot of intermingled business and personal relationships, my grandparents on my father's side found out about my wedding, and about me, I suppose. They've been in contact and want to come to Canada to meet me and my fiancé, who I guess is a grandson of an acquaintance of theirs. Small world. When they found out that my father had basically abandoned me to fend for myself in this world, they were pissed, to say the least. This is all very funny, because we are decidedly upper middle class here. So, long story short, they had their lawyer calculate the amount of child support that my father should have paid with interest and the cost of my post-secondary education. They then gave me this amount of money as a gift. What I didn't know was that this money came out of my father's yearly draw on his trust fund. He's furious because this is obviously a sizable amount and it will very much affect his finances for at least the next two years. He may need to <gasps> get a job. He's been contacting me and telling me that his current wife and kids will be negatively affected if I don't give him back this money. The thing is, I don't really need this money. But I guess I am entitled to it and I'm getting a trust fund now as well. But I really want to pay off any debt that my mother may have and make sure that when she retires, she can do whatever suits her fancy. So I am not giving it back. Am I the butthole? Okay, um, I honestly don't even know why you made this post. Because you are as absolved of responsibility as you possibly could be in the situation. For one, you didn't even seek out your father or your grandparents. They just happened to find you on their own. For two, you didn't ask for this money. They just offered it to you. For three, it was never even your father's money in the first place. It was your grandparents' money, and they have the right to do whatever they want to with their own money. And then, gosh, I've lost count. Number five, I think. And then for five, you're literally legally entitled to this money. I mean, not now. At the age of 28, I think you're probably, like, you couldn't sue for that money even if you wanted to. I would guess. Maybe you could. But you should have been entitled to it legally, like, 10, 18 years ago. The only potential caveat to this story is I think someone could make an argument that that money should go to your mom instead of you. Because even though that child support was meant to support you, it was your mother who was paying those bills. So she's the one who, you know, paid for your upbringing, for your clothes, and that money would have helped her out, even though it would have been for you. So I could see someone making that argument. I'm personally not making that argument. I'm guessing that your mother is probably happy that the money came to you, and I'm happy the money came to you, and your grandparents are happy the money came to you. I'm just saying, I think the grandparents were being a little bit, a little bit, what's the word? Unfair, I think. They're being a little bit unfair to your mother. So I think what they should have done was probably, man, this is complicated. Who should the grandparents give the money to? I actually don't know the answer to this. Should they have given it to the mother, who actually paid and spent the money over all these years? Or should they give it to OP, who was like owed this money from the father. I actually, I don't know the answer to this question. People of YouTube, please let me know what you think down in the comments. Who should get the money from the grandparents, the mother or OP? I think honestly, since they're so incredibly rich, what they should have done was give money to both of you, right? But if it had to be one, what should it be? Anyways, OP, I give you easy zero out of five buttholes. You did nothing wrong. All you did was accept a wedding gift, basically. I'm giving the grandparents zero out of five buttholes. It's awesome that they're trying to rectify their son's mistake. Your father, on the other hand, gets 4.5 out of five buttholes. This guy abandoned his wife and child and then complained that he had to pay them even though he has a new family, which is just selfish BS. Am I the butthole for crying at dinner on purpose to embarrass my dad and brother? I know the title sounds ridiculous, but there's context. I'm currently in high school and I live with my dad and my brother. My mom's not in the picture anymore. 
While I'm not very close with my father, he's not a bad dad. He's just a little old-fashioned, so he's closer to my brother. They have the same hobbies. On to the problem. I don't know how it started, but for the past couple of months, both my dad and my brother will start teasing me about that time in the month anytime I even get remotely irritated or upset at them. For example, my brother ate a snack of mine that I was saving, and when I got mad, he just joked, Oh no, is it that time again? In a super annoying voice. I keep trying to tell them separately and together that it's really annoying and offensive, and I feel like they're totally minimizing how I feel about things that I had valid reasons for being annoyed about. But when I do that, they just brush it off even more and chalk it up to my period no matter what time of the month it is. Well, yesterday, we had dinner with my whole family on my dad's side for my aunt's birthday. Before dinner, I got into a huge fight with my brother because he broke my iPad and instead of apologizing, he just said, it's that time of the month again. I admit that by the time that we got to my grandma's house, I was pretty pissed. My cousin asked me what was wrong during dinner and before I could explain, my brother interrupted with, oh, it's just lady problems. I usually just ignore him or hold things in, but I had enough and just started bawling. I admit that I kind of went ham on purpose to cause a scene, and it freaked my whole family out. My aunt asked my dad why I was so upset, and when he didn't know I told my aunt, it's just lady reasons according to my dad and brother. My aunt and grandma were pissed at my dad and brother, and they totally got reamed at the dinner table. It was this whole thing, and I could tell that they were super embarrassed. Later that night, my brother and dad said that I was the butthole for causing a scene and embarrassing them but I said that I was just acting like the way that they always say that I do. I guess I didn't have to do it during dinner, but it wasn't like I planned it. Alright, let's be super clear, OP. Your brother and your father are systematically undermining and embarrassing you every chance they get. Your brother literally embarrassed you in front of everyone, so then when you embarrass them in front of everyone, suddenly you're the problem? No, doesn't work that way. OP, I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes. I'm giving the men in your family 2 out of 5 buttholes. Especially like you getting upset about your brother breaking your iPad. iPads are like, what, 800 bucks nowadays, $1,000? iPads are hundreds of dollars, so it's perfectly reasonable for you to get upset over that. That was our slash am I the butthole, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.